Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Congressman Tim Ryan, Senator Sherrod Brown, and Hillary Clinton. in town we thought we'd bring her over what do you say thank you so so much for being here for waiting around uh, in such a great facility in such a great town the future of Youngstown is happening right now in this facility I just I have a couple things I want to say uh, before I introduce a phenomenal Senator, Senator Sherrod Brown, who is with us here today. You know, we've all been in a lot of campaigns over the years. Uh, and the other day I was, I was flipping through the, the TV and uh, with, I got the remote control, and with three kids and two dogs and a wife, you don't always get the remote control. But I got a hold of it, I started flipping through the channels, and there was a documentary by the old basketball coach, Jimmy Valvano. Remember Jimmy V? Guy ran around the court after all that? Yeah. So Jimmy V was given a speech, and he said, God must have loved ordinary people, because he made a lot of us. <laughs> but every day, in every way, ordinary people do extraordinary things. Every day in every way, ordinary people do extraordinary things. And when I read Secretary Clinton's policies, when I watch her, when I see her, when I hear her, think through ideas, her whole campaign can be summed up in that phrase. We're going to help ordinary people be able to do extraordinary things. We are going to elevate the dialogue in Washington, D.C. We're going to elevate each other. We're going to elevate public policy. And we are going to make history in this election. I just, I just want to say one or two more things. Because there's a lot, of, a lot of talk about anger. You may have heard it on the talk shows, right? A lot of talk about anger. And I don't think being angry is necessarily bad. It happens. It's a natural emotion. It's what you do after you're angry that really matters. And I remember a lot of us that played sports over the years here, you'd lose a game. You'd get really mad, right? you get angry. And you'd be angry for a while. But what does Urban Meyer do? What does Pete Care? What do these great coaches do after they get angry after they lose a game. You go back, you watch film, you learn, you figure out what you did wrong, and then you put a plan together to make sure you don't lose anymore. And Hillary Clinton has the plans for us to resuscitate manufacturing here in the Mahoning Valley and lift us back up and elevate us back up here in this community. I want to say one last thing, and I don't normally do this, but I want, to, I want to share with you my favorite Bible quote. And it's, it's not 2 Corinthians, for anybody who's... For anyone who's keeping score at home. It's <laughs> Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Then the Lord came down, and he asked, Whom shall I send? Who, 
who, who will go for me? And I said, send me, Lord. Send me. And every one of you in this room at some point, because I know who you are, you said, send me. You're a union member. You're a teacher. You're a community leader. We got some teachers here. You said, send me, right? And we are thankful that you're going to campaign and hard in the next three days to make sure Secretary Clinton ends up in the White House. But I want to say, finally, that at every stage of this magnificent woman's life, she said, send me. Whether it was going to South Carolina, When young kids needed her in South Carolina, she said, send me. When people in the Deep South needed help at a young age or legal representation, she said, send me. When young kids in Arkansas needed a better education, Hillary Clinton, not as an elected official, said, send me. When young kids needed health care, after she fought hard to get universal health care the first time, and Hillary Clinton, we all remember that battle you went through for all of us. She said, send me. When the 9-11 responders needed help, Hillary Clinton said, send me. And now, when her country needed her to represent us around the world, Hillary Clinton said, send me. And you know what we're going to do now? We are going to send her. We're going to send her to the White House. And now let me introduce the great senator, the fighting senator from Ohio, Senator Sherrod Brown. Father Ryan, thank you. Well done. I saw Tim's mother earlier tonight. Where is she? Thank you. Well done. So that's a priest next to her too. Right? I, I know. I met. I met him. I know. I see that. I see that. Well, I know. Well, on Monday morning, this Monday, I'm going to go because I have to go back to Washington Monday night. I'm going to the Board of Elections, and I'm going to cast my vote for the first woman president of the United States, Hillary yeah. Rodham. We've all been waiting a long time for this and how exciting it is. Uh, Mike and Jeanette, thank you for opening up your business again. Uh, this was the site of Secretary Clinton and Tim and Joe Schiavone and I were talking and John Bacheri earlier. This is the site where we announced the $70 million first manufacturing hub in the United States of America back in 2012. And this is... This is how, this is part of the puzzle of putting, of moving the Mahoning Valley forward, of a new day here. It was the auto rescue, which Secretary Clinton was involved in. It was the auto rescue in 2009. As most of us drove in here past the Lorick Steel, it was, while well, that plant's had some problems because, again, because of dump steel and because of natural gas prices, it was that plant. Um, that hired a thousand people because of the Stim Recovery Act and because we enforced trade law so that they could compete and make that steel charge steel pipe. We we know what's happening with the Youngstown incubator. We know what's happening in this community. Hillary Clinton and her husband have always loved this valley. As Dave Beatrice said, they've always been here. There's a reason she's the only presidential candidate that's come to Youngstown because she knows this really is the heartbeat of this state and of this country. Now, um, I was in, Tim and I were in, um, in, in, in Akron earlier today with 
uh, former president, and we're getting to see a future president tonight, and the former president had the same last name as the future president. <laughs> And I turned to him at one time, and I said, at one point, and I said, we were both on the stage together. I said, not to offend you, Mr. President, but you know, Hillary Rodham Clinton is the most qualified person to run for president in my lifetime. <laughs> Period. He did, he did kind of smile when I said that. But I also know he agreed with, he agreed, she is the most qualified in our lifetime. I, I, I want to talk about a couple of issues. And I, I, I look at what, what, I, what I love about Hillary Rodham Clinton is what she did kind of in her whole life before she ran for office. You know, she's come to this later in life running for office. Um, it wasn't what she naturally wanted to do when she was in her 20s, like Tim, like me, like uh, William Jefferson Clinton. Um, it's what she came to because she saw it was a way to serve. And when she was in her 20s, when she got involved in the Children's Defense Fund, um, fighting for children, going south on civil rights, fighting for children, fighting for families, what she did on health care. I sat and I was a first year congressman back then when she came as the first lady and sat in front of this committee and was just incredible. It reminded me 25, 20 years later of watching her at the 11 hour Benghazi hearings when she was a giant among pygmies. <laughs> But I want to, I, I, so I, she, she's, you know, I, I, I trust Hillary Clinton. I trust Hillary Clinton in fighting for families. I know what she's going to do on family leave. I know what she's going to do on expansion of the earned income tax credit. I know what she's going to do in fighting for voting rights for families. I trust Hillary Clinton on, on fighting for the middle class. I know what she's going to do on trade. I know what she's going to do on trade enforcement. I know what she's going to do on all the issues that matter to all of us. And I trust Hillary Clinton on manufacturing and trade policy. She has, bar none by far, the best, most thought out way to bring manufacturing back in this country. And I, and I trust her on carrying out the right kind of trade policy. She's going to have a special super prosecutor that reports directly to the president on trade policy and to, on trade enforcement. She's going to go after fighting on currency issues because we know how China cheats on currency. She's going to triple the trade enforcement staff and efforts to, to enforce trade agreements so Valoric Steel and U.S. Steel and so many other companies don't continue to have the, bot, have the rug pulled out from under them because other countries dump their products into this country. And, and she understands, she understands, as we all understand in Mahoning Valley, she understands what happens with trade agreements when you don't do it right on autos. Her opposition to the Trans-Pacific Partnership is for a lot of things. One of them is something called rules of origin on auto, say, on, on auto manufacturing. And if, if we don't get our way, if we would lose on this, it would mean cars assembled more than 50% in China could backdoor their way into the U.S. market. She won't allow that as president. She's fought on that. She'll continue to fight on that. That's real jobs at Lordstown. It's real jobs in the Valley. And the last thing, I, I would, Senator Schiavone was talking to Hillary in the other room for a moment. And he talked, about, he talked about the takeover of Youngstown schools. And how I, I, so soon after that was announced, I met with a number of people in the community, including teachers and others. And it, it, it just, it, it shows a disrespect. You know, I mean, I, you know, there's plenty of Republicans I like. There's plenty of Republicans that want to do the right thing. But this whole view they have of privatization of public schools and privatization of prisons and privatization of water systems and privatization of Social Security and privatization of Medicare always is a direct attack on the middle class. And it starts with schools if we don't do education right. And she has been a national leader on that. So I, I, I will close with this. Um, four years ago, four years ago, I was, um, I was campaigning for re-election and uh, 
thank you all for all that you did for my re-election at the same time for President Obama's re-election in 2012. And I, met, I met a guy from Connecticut that walked up to me and he said, you know, in Connecticut, we're sick and tired every four years of watching the race for president of Ohio. <laughs> and you know what that means. What that means is you have the power in the valley because as the valley goes, Ohio goes, in the primary and the general. You have the power in the next three days to make sure that Hillary Clinton wins Ohio. She wins Ohio. She's also she's going to win Florida. She's going to win North Carolina. She's going to win Illinois. She's going to win Missouri. She wins. She wins Ohio on Tuesday, and the nomination is hers. The nomination is ours. Then the work begins in the general election. So you do it right in, in Youngstown, in Niles, in Girard, in, in, in Liberty Township, in Austin Town, and all over the valley. You do it right in the next three days. You set the stage to do it right in November, and you will see the next President of the United States, Hillary Clinton. Youngstown and then all of you here at this great facility. I want to thank uh, Mike and Jeanette Garvey and everybody at M7 Technologies who welcomed us here. I am thrilled to be with two of my favorite uh, folks in Washington, in the Congress, in the Senate. Uh, it won't surprise you to hear me say that I wish that uh, we could clone uh, both Tim and Sherrod. We'd have a lot better government, a lot better decision making, a lot more concern about the middle class. Tim Ryan has an amazing ability to try to get, bring people together. It isn't easy. I admire the way he keeps working at it while he represents you, while he fights for you. I cannot tell you how proud I am to not only work with him, but to have him as my friend. So thank you so much, Tim. And thanks to your mom, who really made it all possible. Uh, I also want to thank Sherrod. You know, you can't overstate the important role that he is playing in the Senate. I do hope we're able to win enough seats to take back the Senate, put it back into Democratic control. You have a chance to help us do that right here in Ohio, because that will even give Sherrod a bigger platform to make sure that we pay attention to what it is that makes America work. And at the heart of that is manufacturing. You know, there are a lot of folks who claim, well, you know, we can't bring manufacturing back. We can't make things in America. I just fundamentally, absolutely disagree with that. And you know why? Because I have seen the future. I know what we're capable of. I just had a real quick look at some of the technology here at M7, technology that is so far advanced that if we really coordinate and cooperate and build up the manufacturing hubs and do everything we can to protect our businesses from unfair competition, I'm telling you right now, we're going to have a manufacturing renaissance, and it will be driven by, supported by, and created by people right here in Ohio, in this valley, in this city. Now, now this gentleman here, I, I, he has a, a firm belief that Cell phones affect your salivary glands. I don't have any information about that. I respect, I respect his opinion, and I hope he'll let us talk about manufacturing, because that's what's going to bring jobs back. That's what's going to make the economy grow. That's what's going to give the middle class the opportunity, once again, to be at the center of the American economy. So what are some of the things we're going to do together? Well, number one, I'm following up on what Sherrod said. 
We are going to enforce trade agreements. We are not any longer going to be at the mercy of whatever any country decides to do to take advantage of our markets. I am going to have a trade prosecutor. And that is especially important for autos and steel. You know, when I was in the Senate, we have steel in New York, not as much as we used to, but we have some. And what we were facing back then, more than 10 years ago now, was the unfair dumping. And I'll tell you, Tim and Sherrod, I went before the International Trade Commission, and I testified on behalf of our steelmakers, because what has been happening is unfair. It is wrong. We are going to enforce trade agreements, and we are going to stop China or anybody else from dumping steel into our market, undermining our businesses and our workers. It's also important for autos, because we need a domestic steel industry to keep growing our domestic auto industry. And I was proud to vote for the bill that enabled the recovery of the auto industry. It was not an easy vote, but it was the right vote. And what was so sad is that my opponent voted for it before he voted against it. He voted against the money that went to the auto industry that began the recovery which gave our automakers the best year that they've had in a long time. So I'm proud. I voted to save auto companies and auto worker jobs. Now, I, guess I can tell you this. There, there are some folks supporting my opponent in this primary who just can't stand the facts. But the facts could not be clearer. And I am proud to have stood on the side of the automakers and workers. It's also important, though, that we keep building a strong platform for autos. That's why I support Sherrod's position. We cannot let rules of origin allow China or anybody else, but principally China, to go around trade agreements, to go around any other kind of regulation and basically be importing cars that have a lot of Chinese content. We're not going to let that happen. I have said if it takes, if it takes our trade prosecutor and a squad of investigators and inspectors, we're not going to let that happen. It's one of the reasons why I opposed the Trans-Pacific Partnership, because when I saw what was in it, it was clear to me there were too many loopholes, too many opportunities for folks to be taken advantage of. Again, when I was a senator from New York, I defended New York companies and workers against all kinds of actions by China to make it difficult for things that were made in America to get into the Chinese market. I stood up for our companies in New York. I will stand up for companies in Ohio and companies across America. It's exciting for me. I am really totally committed to bringing back manufacturing again. As Sherrod said, I'm the only candidate on either side who actually has a plan to do that, you know? Look, you know, it's okay to be against things. I'm against a lot of things, too. But you got to be for things if we're going to build America, if we're going to create more jobs, if we're going to make the middle class the engine of economic growth again. I also want to do more for small businesses. I was talking to Mike and Jeanette. I believe that we've got to support small businesses that are on the cutting edge, like here at this one. I also know that we've got to support small businesses and entrepreneurs, get access to the credit they need. I want to be a strong supporter of small business as your president, 
and the fastest growing small businesses are women owned and minority owned. And I'm going to do everything I can for them too. And let's not forget, in addition to manufacturing jobs, we have infrastructure jobs that we can begin to deploy. There is so much work that needs to be done in this country. Let's get about the business of doing it. And we're going to fight climate change with clean, renewable energy jobs. If we do this right, think about it, my friends. Manufacturing, infrastructure, clean energy jobs, they're jobs that have to be done right here. You can't export them. We're going to do it at home, and we're going to put millions of Americans to work again. And one of the keys, one of the keys to success in the economy, more good jobs with rising incomes, is education. And I thank all the teachers and the educators who are here with us tonight. I want to be a good partner for education. That is why I promote early childhood education, universal pre-kindergarten, paid family leave, things that will make it possible to be both good and effective at work and take care of your most important responsibilities at home. And when we think about K through 12, how about this for an idea? How about some TLC for our public schools? <laughs> Teaching, learning, and community, right? Teaching, we've got to support our teachers. We have to make sure that they have the tools that they need, that they are paid as the professionals they are for the work they do. <laughs> Learning, we've got to prepare our kids better for school, and then we have to provide opportunities. You know, every school in America should have computer science programs, should have computer coding programs. We've got to give kids the tools that they need to be successful in the future. And I also believe we should do what we know works, not fads, not takeovers, not undermining public education. We need to be supporting public education and doing everything we can to make it stronger and to give our kids the chance to be successful in good public schools. I think every child in this country deserves a good teacher in a good school, regardless of the zip code that he or she lives in. And there are too many Republicans who really want to shut down public education, right? They don't seem to understand that public education is the foundation on which we build the middle class. We create the kind of opportunities that our country deserves, that our people are looking for. That gets me to see community. You know, a lot of the challenges we have with our kids in public schools right now is because we are not providing the support that kids in poor districts disadvantaged kids need. When I talk to teachers, here's what I hear very often, telling me how worried they are about a little kid in the coldest day of the year coming to school with a t-shirt, worried that the child gets there and promptly falls asleep, learning that the parents, one or both, are in some kind of trouble, criminal trouble, drug problems, mental health illnesses, and the teachers say to me, what can I do? What can I do? I need more help to help the kids that are in my classroom. We've got to get back to providing the resources. You know, I went to public schools. Honest to goodness, we had nurses in our public schools. We had art and music. We had all kinds of enrichment experiences in our public school. Now, unless you're in a rich district somewhere in Ohio, you don't get those kinds of educational experiences. 
I want the federal government to be supporting equity in education funding. So if you're in a poor district, a district that doesn't have a big property tax base, you're going to get more help. And I want the federal government to do what it promised back in the 1970s. When I was working for the Children's Defense Fund <coughs> and going door to door to find out why kids with disabilities weren't in school, I discovered so many children in wheelchairs, blind, other problems. And <coughs> we passed a law mandating that kids had to be in school. The federal government said it would pay 40% of the cost. Never has. So, <coughs> when I'm president, with your help, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I could use some water. Water would be good. I've been talking for days. But what I want to tell you is they promised to pay 40%. We've only paid 17. That will help a lot of school districts. <coughs> Full service senator. <coughs> Thank you. Service in the Mahoning Valley. I love it. Thank you. So I want to be a good president for education for our students, for our teachers, our families, and our communities. But friends, I can't do any of this without your help on Tuesday. Because I believe in the bargain of America. If you work hard, you do your part, you can get ahead and stay ahead. And that also means that I will be a strong supporter of the American labor movement and unions that provide good wages and benefits for people. This all fits together. We can't let the Republicans continue to dismantle the American middle class. We have to stop it. And I want you to think about this. We've had two Democratic presidents in the last 25 years. Compare what they did and what they were faced with. You know, when my husband became president, we had a recession. We had a quadrupling of the national debt. We had a growing deficit. Bill was asked once, Sherrod and Tim were with him today, what did you bring to Washington? He said, I guess arithmetic. Um, <laughs> Because you know what? Your numbers have to add up. It's easy to make promises you can't keep. You got to produce when you're president. You've got to deliver results. So at the end of his eight years, we had 23 million new jobs and incomes went up for everybody. Not just those at the top. Middle class families, working families, poor families. We were on the right track. We lifted more people out of poverty than at any time in the prior 40 or 50 years. We were on track. What happened? Ask yourself what happened. We got a Republican president, thanks to the Supreme Court, right? And what did that Republican administration do? They started dismantling. Oh, no, it was worse than nothing. They actively dismantled what had been put in place. They began to impose trickle-down economics with a vengeance. They took their eyes off the financial markets and the mortgage markets, and we know what happened, the biggest financial crisis since the Great Depression. So when Barack Obama became president, <laughs> we were losing 800,000 jobs a month. Nine million Americans lost their jobs. Five million lost their homes. Our new young president was handed the worst mess, right? He had nothing to do with creating it, and we were in this big ditch that the Republicans had dropped us in. And I don't think he gets the credit he deserves for making sure we got out of that ditch and we didn't have a Great Depression. So why am I telling you this history? 
because the Republicans want you to forget it. They want you to just think all of these siren songs they're singing about the return to trickle-down economics make sense when it doesn't. And we can't let it happen to us again. So with your help, if you will come out either early voting on Monday with Sherrod or going to the polls on Tuesday, and if you will stand with me and vote for me, I promise you this, I will work my heart out for you. And I know how to get things done. I know how to get results. I know that we can bring back manufacturing. I know we can have good jobs with rising incomes again. So please, join me. Make it happen. Let's work together. Thank you so much. Thank you, and God bless you.